I decided to do my best solid snake impression and hide in a place where I couldn't be seen. Yeah, this is the cringiest thing we've seen in the whole series, isn't it? <laughs> I saw someone wearing a cardboard box just now. Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise swearsies, it's just a fact. And it's totally science, go ahead. Look it up, thanks so much, hey, you know? Kind Lightbeard kind of fell off, but we covered that one up. Now we gotta cover up Cool Todd. Again, I had a little bit of analysis paralysis. I was linked to vast archives of r slash Tard tales, stories about Todd that were apparently deleted. But I figured the thing that would behoove me most would be to finish the Reddit tales, and then we'll see where we're at from there. There are two previous videos for this, links in the description. Uh, let's jump into it. The Todd Saga, The Neckbeard Diaries, Part 4, Crash Course. You know, OP was typing this up, and he's like, that's a cool name, Crash Course, yeah, bro. <laughs> uh, Jeff, 16, 6 foot, 160, your resident chai Raki dragged himself out of his sick bay to see his friend and his crush. Yes, indeed, OP, so brave that he would drag his sick ass into public to possibly infect other people. <laughs> uh, perfect. I was sick, but I'm gonna do what I want to do anyways. Well, maybe you shouldn't. Uh, there was also Keyshawn, 17, the friend I came to see, aspiring rapper who moved here in 7th grade from Chicago, disliked by Ellie but had a very close-knit group of friends, 5 foot 8, 170, Todd, 17, my stalker, in actuality, my clingy autistic friend, also disliked by Ellie, 5 foot 10, 230, Ellie, 14, uh, 14, 16, it makes me uncomfortable. I've seen it happen, <laughs> but at this point in my life, it makes me uncomfortable. But anyways, Ellie's a scene girl that sits next to OP in French class. <laughs> my love interest. Been hanging out with her a lot. Five foot nine, one sixty. Yeah, remember when scene was the thing? <laughs> Smelly scene kids. The Todds, Mama, Papa, and Nana Todd. Nice enough people. They dote on me. Trenchcoat guy, 19, that trenchcoat guy, one of Todd's four friends and his quote-unquote assistant. Clay was out, I was with my friends and flame shirt had a date. I don't really remember who any of those people are, but okay, cool. <laughs> the cousins, my favorite cousins, twins who are basically like my big sisters, and their boyfriends. The five of us are very close. And Mrs. Johnson, who is Ellie's mother. What a cast list. All right, let's get this goddamn thing on the road. <laughs> Uh, I looked over to Ellie, her mom, and her friends, praying that she'd notice who I was with and save me. But unfortunately, they were too busy talking to each other. I had to deal with Todd's clinginess on my own. Yeah, the mental SOS doesn't usually work unless you know that person super well. Since the last story, he had started growing a literal neck beard and a wispy mustache that he didn't want to shave, and he started putting on weight. So it's not exactly like Jay Cutler was chasing me around Anyville. Haha, <laughs> great reference. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, I just kept walking to the snack table because I needed a drink, but he insisted on following me there. Yeah, that's not a good enough escape plan. Bathroom, that's, that's the go-to escape plan. I just wish I was first so I could leave earlier. Obviously, he was oblivious to the fact that I was showing up for more people than just him, and that the girl who was first was the girl that I liked. This pissed me off to no end, so I continued to walk away. Yeah, don't don't address any of it at all. I think that's the main gripe I had with this OP. It's sort of all coming back to me now. Is it really that hard to just open up? Or are you just super busy trying to ride Kishan's dick? <laughs> uh, uh. So yes, Todd once again followed OP and asked if I wanted to leave with him and Trenchcoat Guy, and I reminded him about my plans with the cousins afterward. Todd was always like a lost puppy. Every time he saw me, regardless of who I was with or what I was doing, he would cling to me and follow every step I made. He was trying to talk with me, and after I got my drink, I heard another offer that I couldn't accept. Hey, Jeff, come sit with everyone. No thanks, I found a table already. 
If Ellie and Keyshawn weren't around, I probably would have sat with him, but I did not have the patience to risk getting blocked by a future public masturbator again. <laughs> so I kept sitting with Keyshawn and friends. Oh my god, we're part of the and friends part. Despite his attachment, I actually tolerated Todd. His family treated me like I was one of their own, and he meant well. If he simply kept his distance when I was talking to my friends and participated in the group, I didn't care about him making himself one of us. However, I can't stand Trenchcoat Guy because he's a selfish, rage-induced cockblock who will show up to my house uninvited, so uh, I had to decline. It's almost like you're trying to convince yourself. You're like, yeah, I was totally a good friend to him, and here's why. It's just that other guy that was with him. <laughs> uh, nobody asked, bro. Nobody asked for any of this. <laughs> You're stating the case because you feel guilty about it. And there's a part of me that says, maybe you should. Stop calling him your friend and then treating him like trash. It's pretty simple, isn't it? <laughs> Soon enough, the performances had begun. First up was Ellie, the apple of my eye. Oh yes, and surely she shall give the performance of a lifetime! <laughs> she sang a few songs, and I was absolutely mesmerized by her beauty and her voice. But mostly her beauty. <laughs> After all, she was extremely talented. I could hear Keyshawn and friends talking about how good of a singer she was. However, my daydreams of growing old with Ellie were interrupted once more by the screams of an annoyed child. What's the matter, Jeff? Why aren't you sitting with me? It would be so simple to explain it to him, but OP's just never gonna bother. He's like, why can't you read my mind about it? <laughs> Concentrate, damn you! <laughs> I know you can read my thoughts, boy. At this point, I wasn't even that mad. Normally, I would be. It was the third time he asked if I wanted to sit with him, and he absolutely didn't want to take no for an answer. Maybe it was seeing old friends. Maybe it was the fact that I was being serenaded by Ellie. Pfft. Hell, <laughs> maybe it was just me being my old softy self. Hell, maybe it was a little bit of all three put together. Hell yeah, maybe, dude. <laughs> what are we talking about? After all, I liked the song she was playing, and she was the one who actually showed it to me. Yeah, you're definitely the main character, OP. <laughs> All I remember is firmly saying, Because I have other friends. The girl performing is one of them. These people are too. So shut up and listen. Probably harder than it needed to be, but you know what? You got the message across and that's the important part. Todd hung his head, dejected and finally accepting his rejection. Ellie's performance finished to a rousing applause as the usher called Todd's name, and he went into his routine. What's his routine? <laughs> OP says he bombed it spectacularly. To his credit, he didn't steal any jokes, and I don't quite remember much of his set, but what I remember was Mama Todd being the only one consistently laughing. Dude, sometimes awkward guys are so, like, naturally funny on stage if they just lean into it. Nana Todd only chuckled a couple of times, and Papa Todd... Well, he didn't even laugh once. <laughs> My boy up on stage like some sort of clown. <laughs> that, no, no, no! Trench coat guy handed Todd note cards and helped him set up, but even he was fairly uninterested. He got a few courtesy laughs from a few parents, but during some jokes, you could hear a pin drop. Somewhere around the internet is a video of his performance, but I'm not releasing it for personal reasons. Yeah, I mean, that's that would be a pretty shitty thing to do. Watch this kid bomb. I would like to see it. Maybe some of those jokes could have been good if they were tweaked a little bit. I could give a stand-up critique on it all. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> anyway, the Todds left almost immediately after his performance was over to a chorus of drafts as they passed my table. It was probably one of the funniest Todd events I've ever had in my life. Hey, Jeff. How are you, Jeff? Good to see you, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Sub, Jeff. <laughs> my name is Jeff. <laughs> After Todd's performance and my constant rejections, I stopped paying attention until Keyshawn and friends went up. 
Dick riding for Keyshawn, for Keyshawn. <laughs> Dick riding for tomorrow. Dick riding for today. Uh, things went well. <laughs> okay, well, I'm glad to hear that. No description of what they did exactly, but... <laughs> Uh, my favorite teacher made a surprise appearance. Keyshawn blew everyone away, and Ellie couldn't keep her eyes off me the entire night. So overall, it was a good night. Yeah, now lay down and have yourself a, a well-deserved slumber, would ya? A deep slumber. Dream in a foul soup. <laughs> uh... Since all of Keyshawn and friends were performing, and I had nobody to sit with, there was only one option to go to. Hey guys, I don't think we've ever met. I'm OP, Ellie's friend from French class. Hi job, Ellie has told me all about you. Hmm, same. <laughs> it was then that I noticed Ellie's mother, Mrs. Johnson. I knew she worked at school, but I didn't know that she used to work with Todd. Eventually, we all started talking, and her former kid came up. So, Ellie, how was your show? Presumably, OP is talking here. <laughs> what show? asks Ellie. The one where your friend gets chased around by a stalker, and you do nothing to save him. Oh, God. He was there? Yeah. He was the kid with the comedy routine. Wouldn't stop bothering me the whole night. Actually came up to me and demanded why I wasn't sitting with him during your set. I know that kid. He's... Interesting, that's for sure, Mrs. Johnson said. After I chuckled a bit, Ellie retook the conversation. What did you say? One of Ellie's friends was wrapped up in the story too. I just told him that I had other friends. Aw, you broke his little heart, Ellie joked. Ha ha, we're a bunch of mean bitches. You literally did break his heart. He's changed as a human being because of your actions, and I want you to know that. I do load this OP a whole heck of a lot, you know? <laughs> uh, surprisingly, Mrs. Johnson didn't comment much on her experiences with Todd, and Ellie and I continued the conversation outside. I won't get into the unrelated details because the story's about Todd, but 10 minutes into it, my phone kept buzzing constantly. I figured it was Todd trying to get to me, but eventually I got sick of it and silenced my phone. Well, shit. 16 missed calls, 8 texts, 4 voicemails, all from the cousins. They love to pull stuff like this as much as I love to prank them. And I smiled to myself as I left. They just like bombed your phone for a minute? <laughs> that is a heck of a prank. You guys are sure up to some shenanigans in here, aren't you? You crazy kids. <laughs> you're nuts. You're absolute mad lads, aren't you? There's a big part of me that hates all this, but okay, whatever. Cool, great for you. All right, my ride's here. Nice meeting you guys. Bye, Jap. Of course, that was just Ellie's introduction to our dear friend. Her mother probably told her a bit too, but that was her first real experience around the enigma of Todd. Where is the enigma? He, he's a human being looking for human contact and nobody addresses it directly so he can't understand why he's not getting what he wants. He doesn't react in a horrible way. He doesn't blow up at anybody. Once you address it directly, yeah, he takes it in stride. That's why I call him Cool Todd. He is cool. Cool as a cucumber, man. <laughs> OP's the one that's like out here showing their own ass. Reddit, do you, do you think I'm good enough now? Boo! Get off the stage! <laughs> Man. Uh, uh, let, let's see what happens in the next one. Surely it can't be any worse. Surely. The Todd Saga, The Neckbeard Diaries, Part 5, Tailspin. I swear that theme song is engraved on the inside of my skull. The Players! Same people mostly, except, you know, Alex, 14, who's friends with Ellie and thinks that OP's batshit crazy, and she wouldn't be wrong. That's right, it's only me, a party demon, whoa! <laughs> Do you guys like me yet? <laughs> You're the worst character ever, party demon. <laughs> uh, also, don't be Ricky, who is 14, friend of mine and Ellie. Feel free to be him when he's not trying to steal my girl. I mean, let's be fair, Ricky's 14. 
He belongs with someone who is 14. Why are you hanging around all of these children? Aside from the fact that you're clearly a, a, a mental Lilliputian. But I digress! <laughs> I sighed to myself as the cold Illinois wind hit my veins. Another cold and dreary day. Whoa, I said to myself. I walked inside and beelined to class with thoughts of Ellie dancing around my head. This is called limerence. She's not even a real person to you. She's an idea. But yeah, I guess those brain chemicals do feel pretty good. Why not <laughs> ride about while they last, you know? Uh, one boring hour of calculus separated me from her. And once French class started, I'd be able to see her again. Oh, golly gee, what are we even learning calculus for? <laughs> uh, you know, it was a basic algebra class. I refuse to believe that he's t actually taking calculus, okay? <laughs> Come on! Do math! I sat with a few members of the football team that had decided to take advanced math, and we waited for announcements together. Nobody really listened to them, but one phrase caught my ear that day. There will be an assembly for Spirit Week in the auditorium today. Seniors and sophomores will go to the auditorium at 12.30, and freshmen and juniors will arrive at 1.30. My heart raced. An opportunity to see my love had arose. I don't give a shit about any of that, OP. <laughs> Bring me the beard so I can yell at you some more for being mean to the beard. Are you really so self-absorbed that you can't possibly write a coherent story that doesn't include yourself as the main character? I don't want to hear any more about you chasing around a 14-year-old girl, even at age 16. Let Ricky move in. <laughs> Same age bracket, it's fine. Uh, but OP says, I yearned to capitalize on it. Oh yes, what a yearning in my loins. <laughs> uh, great, I hate it. I said it out loud and I hate it. Uh, after one hour, <laughs> the bell had freed me, and I made the short walk to see the girl of my dreams. Yeah. At least for this month. <laughs> In the past three weeks, Todd's temper had mollified. Aside from a few incidents that don't deserve to be mentioned, even his constant calls had dropped slightly. However, with every day, Ellie grew more and more enraptured with me. Yeah, Todd wasn't really hanging around anymore, but let's talk about that boring shit that you said you don't care about some more. <laughs> it's all about me! in this uninteresting, slightly uncomfortable relationship. Quote unquote, relationship. This just manages to get my goat every single time. <laughs> <laughs> but it rolls on, saying when the teacher paired Ellie up to do a group study with some other kid, she bargained her way out of it so that I could partner with her instead. She insisted on waiting for me to leave so I could walk with her, even for class. Hell, the girl even convinced her friends to sit with me, Clay, and our friends when three seats opened up at our table. Commitment grew more urgent. Oh my god. Uh, have you moved her into your MySpace Top 8 yet? Because that's, <laughs> I'm pretty sure, super important. About as important as all that other bullshit you just talked about. <laughs> uh, just, where's Todd? Please, Todd, that beacon of hope. He's not that interesting, but he's far more interesting than OP, who thinks he's the most interesting man in the world. I hate it. I hate it and I want to die and I hate it. <laughs> uh, uh, OP says, French class had become routine at this point. Barely work, let Ellie coffee off of me, and then spend the rest of the period doing nothing productive and talking with each other. Can you conceive of why this might not be very fascinating to the reader? This is drivel. This is a, a free on your Kindle romance novel. <laughs> uh, please stop whatever the hell this is supposed to be. You promised me a neckbeard. I promised all of these people a neckbeard. Bring him out. Uh, maybe eventually. <laughs> After French, I was basically counting down the hours until the clock struck 1.30 and the opportunity to take a chance at hanging out with her. I twiddled my thumbs from third period, which was essentially a class where I spent time on Reddit, to sixth period, where I just did stupid things with my friends in chemistry. 
Yeah, it's school, nothing serious. We're all just horsing around. <laughs> My friends for that class asked me to go watch this assembly with them beforehand, and I gave them a tentative green light. Why do I even care? Why is this so painful? <laughs> Why have you written this, OP? These posts really are just the worst thing ever. <laughs> OP says, Then the clock struck 1.30. They had taken too long packing up, so my impatience got the best of me, and I left on my own. Yeah, I'm somewhat of a lone wolf. I'm out here just looking for my alpha female. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. I told them I'd meet them at the assembly, and I grabbed my stuff and started walking down to the auditorium by myself. Then, I realized the hidden variable in all of this. Todd. He had a penchant for inviting himself into our friend groups just to talk to me, and even if I was hanging out with other people, Todd was there. I mean, box him out, tell him straight that you don't want to be friends with him anymore, but honestly, OP can't even admit that to himself, so how are you supposed to have that conversation? Just let Todd stand there and pretend he's part of the group for God's sake. <laughs> it's fine. OP says if someone was there, I could post up and wait for whoever was coming. Yeah. That sounds like a really great plan, mostly consisting of non-coherent rambling. <laughs> uh, the, the first obstacle was Dum Dum HQ, which Todd was by once again. I decided to do my best solid snake impression and hide in a place where I couldn't be seen. Yeah, this is the cringiest thing we've seen in the whole series, isn't it? <laughs> I saw someone wearing a cardboard box just now. Uh, I simply used the lockers as cover in case Todd saw me, and he had an eagle eye. Oh my god, the stakes are so high. You might have to talk to this person that you purportedly call your friend. <laughs> uh, second was Todd's Wrangler's office, where he sat sometimes. I simply speed walked across, not noticing if anybody was in there. Next, I simply had to walk down, unmolested. Good luck with that. Also a really interesting word choice. <laughs> However, before I could even get into the lobby, I was spotted. I looked over at the mysterious duo that had seen through my amateur ninjutsu. God, can we just... <laughs> can we just take a break? Can we just take a break? I just can't do it. I can't take this shit no more, man. I'm getting old and I don't know if I can endure this much anymore, you know? <laughs> this is really hurting me deep down. Uh, what the fuck are you talking about? Is this post-ironic irony or what the hell's going on? I hate you, OP. I hate you. <laughs> uh, uh, so the mysterious duo turned out to be Ellie and one of her friends. Oh, good. Not the titular character of the story but the significantly underdeveloped girl that has made your pee, pee hard. Phew! Great! I'm so happy about this turn of events! <laughs> uh, uh, can it be over now? <laughs> OP says, I couldn't keep my eyes off of her. Please try. <laughs> I just flashed a smile at her. When she saw me, her green eyes shone like Times Square on New Year's Eve. The way you describe everything is just so generic and terrible, you know that? Apple of my eye, Times Square on New Year's Eve. You're not doing anything to paint a picture with your words. You're using random phrases and idioms that you heard somewhere else to lie to the internet and make yourself look cool. I bet Todd doesn't even show up this episode. I bet this is an episode called, ooh, Todd something something, and he's only ever there in theory. When OP does his cool amateur ninjutsu, which makes me want to stab myself in the ear with an ice pick. But yes, please, continue. <laughs> uh, her smile took full control of her face. She had become the predator now, and she sent her friend forward and slinked back to meet me. Slinked back like a slinky? She just fell headfirst down the stairs. Whoa. Oh. Oh. He needs some milk. <laughs> uh, 
It took me a while to collect myself from the disbelief that I was in. The two years before I met Ellie had molded me into a jaded man who couldn't see himself as lovable. And even now, I was unsure of myself, but still, I walked over. You don't understand, Ellie. I'm 16 and so jaded. You can't possibly fix me. I can totally fix you. You just need to give me time. <laughs> uh, that's how all of this plays out, isn't it? And Todd never appears. Todd never appears in this story. And it... <laughs> Uh, I'm so angry. I'm so upset. I feel so betrayed. Do you understand? You can't possibly understand. You can't see anything outside of yourself, can you, OP? You're looking at the entire world through a pinhole. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. Uh, but yeah, OP walked over and she says, Hey, Jeff, what's up? Nothing much. Just ditching my friends. Come on, Jeff. You know your friends love you. Yeah, Jeff. You're such a likable guy, Jeff. Let's insert more of that into the story. How much can we possibly shoehorn in? <laughs> your friends love you, as does every woman on the planet. You're such a unique and special guy and definitely better than Keyshawn, deep down. You could rap if you wanted to. You could out-rap him, but you just don't want to. That's the reason. Why pursue anything, as long as random people on the internet think you're cool? <laughs> you know where I'm coming from? <laughs> Obi says, so should I just call Alex over so she could crash our little hangout sesh? Ugh. <laughs> we both laughed. Yeah, great joke. Walking to the auditorium to pick out a seat. We acted like we planned this. She sat down with me, taking up the aisle seat. Watch my stalker try and sit with us. If he does, you're about to see some fireworks. Oh yeah, baby, you're a firework. Come on, let your colors burst. <laughs> I never earned a reputation for being a hothead like Todd, but Ellie knew that I had a temper. Yeah, just enough of a temper. To where he's sort of dangerous, but not really. I totally trust him, but he could totally kill somebody, you know? I swear, I can fix him just more time. <laughs> uh... I loved her too much to ever go off on her, but nevertheless, she knew. Bro, I just made a joke about it, now you're like saying it out loud. That's ominous as fuck. You realize that, don't you? <laughs> Ellie needs to move away from OP, okay? I'm sure now more than ever. Ugh. Ellie had heard all about trench coat guy and my struggles with him wanting to go postal on everyone. And of course she said, don't hurt him too bad, Jeff. He might end himself. Yes, not only is OP a genius Casanova, but he's got martial arts moves. You totally beat him up for me, won't you, babe? Yeah, babe. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie just knew me too well. I'm a sucker for dark humor. Is it dark? Yes. Is it humorous? Mm, hardly. <laughs> we sat there talking about stalkers and friends and stupid stuff during the assembly. What was the assembly about? We don't recall at all. <laughs> After a few minutes of conversation, I saw my friend from French class out of the corner of my eye. I noticed him glancing at Ellie for the past few months, and he had attempted many times to join in on our conversations together. Hey Ellie, why aren't you sitting with Alex and your friends? Because I want to sit here. At this point, I smiled smugly. Oh, I, I don't think you know how to smile any other fucking way, OP. <laughs> I gotta be completely honest with you. You do everything smugly. I breathed smugly. You took a big old smugly doo-doo. <laughs> uh, I turned around and simply said his name. Ricky? As soon as he saw who I was, he turned beet red and walked off apologetically. What? <laughs> uh, what the hell? Is Ricky short for Rumpelstiltskin? It's just like, that's like his weakness or something? <laughs> I don't know what just happened! Afterward, Ellie and I held a prayer circle that Todd wouldn't come see me and my friends in the back screamed to me, Yeah, Jeff! But when I turned around to wave to them, I saw a gray, neck-bearded blur out of the corner of my eye, running across the auditorium like a soldier's wife coming home from Afghanistan. 
That's probably the most apt analogy that we've heard all day. And still, this is a horribly written piece of garbage. I hate it. I was planning on doing all four parts today, but I just, I can't. My blood pressure's spiking. My smartwatch is like, please don't do any more. <laughs> okay, fine. We're done, we're good. But I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Like, sub, all those things, very important. So are the links in the description, including my Patreon patrons, my YouTube channel members. My goodness, just couldn't do it without them. We've got exclusive episodes every Sunday. I hope you'll uh, check it out at some point, at least if you are able. I want to make sure you eat before I eat. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, uh, on the playlist, I'm going to link you back to Gene Beard. The first episode that really made me get mad at an OP. Like, true seething rage. Looking back, I should have gone way harder. Way harder! But we can only move forward from where we're at. I hope you guys will click on through. I know you'll enjoy it. Please always remember, friends, as well, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye-bye. Go ahead and cut him open. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Promise swears he's